Hey friends, this is Kent Sanders from The Artist Suitcase at artistsuitcase.com and I want to take a few minutes today to show you some cool new features on Apple's iOS 7. And I'm going to demonstrate this on an iPhone and of course it's going to be available for iPad as well. But uh, let me show you some cool things on this. It has a lot of new features. It's not radically different, but it has enough features that it's definitely well worth upgrading to the new iOS. Now one thing is you're not going to be able to see where I'm tapping, you know, like you obviously you can't see my thumb as I'm scrolling through this, because I'm mirroring the display on my iPhone to my Mac and then I'm doing a screen recording through QuickTime. And I'm using that through an app called Air Server that's available online through the AirPlay feature on the Mac. So, uh, but if it's at all confusing where I'm actually swiping and all that stuff, which I don't think it will be, then I'll make sure and explain that as we go through this. So let's jump in here. You notice on the home screen that several of the familiar apps have different icons and different looks and colors like calendar, contacts, settings, camera photos, Safari, and whatnot. But the functionality is pretty much the same on all these things and in some cases definitely improved. So let's jump in here. Let's start from the top of the home screen. If you swipe down you get the familiar notifications area. Uh, so that's not radically different. It's redesigned a little bit but not too different. If you swipe from the bottom of the home screen you get this new feature called the control center. And you have, you know, airplane mode, on and off. You have Bluetooth and your wireless settings, a do not disturb feature, a lock screen setting. Then below that you have a brightness setting, then you have music below that. Then you have an airdrop feature that you can set. Um, and then where it says Kent's MacBook Pro, that is um, the AirPlay setting and you have to have that set up with another device. And then below that, of course, you have the flashlight setting, which is very handy, and then you have a timer, a calculator, and the photos, the, I'm sorry, the camera below that. So let's get out of that. That's a pretty cool addition. Now, one other thing on the home screen is that if you swipe down anywhere on the home screen like this, you get the search bar at the top. So you don't have to swipe to a different screen anymore, and this will just search your phone. So that's a pretty cool feature. Now let's talk specifically about working with some of these apps and the new features that they have. One thing that you'll notice immediately is that whenever you pull up an app, for instance, let's pull up the App Store, the app actually opens from the location of the icon on the screen. So where, whatever app you open like um, this, it's going to open from that location. Again, it doesn't really affect the functionality, it's just kind of a cool new visual feature, which is uh, kind of nice. Another thing is that if you double click the home button, you get this new multitasking feature, which is pretty neat. And you can scroll through and look at the different apps that you've been using. And if you want to get rid of any of these, all you have to do is just simply swipe up and it's gone. And that will close that app, which is kind of a neat feature. Okay, let's go through some specific apps and I'll show you some different things on these. Uh, let's go first of all to the calendar. In the calendar, it, obviously it's a regular calendar, nothing radically different, it just is a little bit redesigned, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really care for the typography of the new iOS. I don't really like these really thin numbers and letters, it just looks kind of odd to me, but, you know, again, it's just a design thing, it's just a preference thing, and I'm sure I'll get used to it, but um, overall that looks fine. Contacts are basically the same. If you go to the camera app, there are some new things here, and I'm, it's a, actually a picture of a picture of a picture. So um, I'll just do it down here for right now. You notice you can go to video there and back to photo. And a new feature is you can take a square picture or you can do the panorama view, which is kind of cool. Also, you have these new filters down here that you can choose from if you like. That's kind of a new feature. And other than that, the camera is pretty much the same. If you go to the Photos app, you notice that they're organized differently. And so this is organized by albums, but if you go to over here to Photos, then you'll see that they're organized by date and also by uh, location. Well, that's my niece, <laughs> some silly pictures. So that's kind of a new thing. Um, I think that's kind of neat to have the photos organized like that. It makes it a little bit easier to navigate through those. Rather than just going through this whole ton of, you know, this 
hundreds of pictures if you have those on there. Uh, the weather app is a little bit different. Not radically different, but the screen actually changes according to what the weather is. So it's kind of an interactive sort of a thing, and you can scroll through what the weather's going to be at different times. If you go to the Compass app, and I'm going to go over here to Utilities. For being up the Compass, it's going to make you calibrate it, and you can't see this, but I'm actually twist. I'm actually turning the iPhone upside down. But then, if you swipe left, you get this new feature. It's a level, which is kind of cool. So level is always very handy. Okay. One thing I wanted to point out as well is that in these folders, you can put more than just, I forget how many apps you could put in there before, but you can actually have different pages. I don't have enough apps in this, you know, in this folder to swipe over, but uh, you can put more apps in those folders than before. Okay, let's go to, sorry, I was thinking for a second. Let's go to Safari. There's a few changes in Safari that you'll notice. Now one thing that you'll notice is up at the top, like if I type in here, and I put, uh, let's say, um, max, or max sales. You notice that this, this bar up here is a search bar as well as a URL bar. So you can put a web address in there or you can just do a search. It's kind of like Google in that sense, so very similar, seems like. Let's go to um, this site, Art of Manliness, one of my favorite websites. And you notice, oh, that's, that's been an article I read a while back. You notice that if you scroll down on the article or on the website, well, apparently it's not going to do it there. Hold on one second. Let me go to here, my site. Okay, there you go. As soon as you start scrolling down on a website, then the bottom row of uh, this bottom layer is going to disappear, as well as the top of it. And so you can do full screen browsing, which is kind of cool. I like that. And at the bottom right, if you click the, um, I don't know what this button at the bottom right is called, but where you can look at multiple pages at once, then you can scroll through the uh, the tabs like that, which is kind of cool. And you can close those out as you need, or you can add a tab if you'd like to. So those are some new things on Safari. Now, one thing that's new about Siri is, let me go to settings and go down to, let's see, where is Siri? Uh, I don't remember where Siri is. Is it under general? Yeah. If you go to the settings for Siri, you notice that you can have either a female or a male voice for some languages, and you can pick different languages here. Of course, I have mine set on United States English. One thing that's new in Siri is that you can search Twitter and Wikipedia through Siri. For instance, let me show you. Siri, can you look up Taylor Guitars on Twitter? Okay, so what it's doing there is it's finding all the places that Taylor Guitars is mentioned or has a hashtag or, or something on Twitter. So that's kind of handy if you want to search Twitter. It will also do this for Wikipedia. Siri, search Wikipedia for Taylor Guitars. Here's some information. Okay, so you get the article there. So that's kind of handy if you use Wikipedia or Twitter a lot for those kind of things. It'll also search Google, but it'll bring it up in the web browser. For instance, Siri, search Google for Taylor guitars. Searching Google for Taylor guitars. Okay, and there's that. You can also launch apps from Siri. I don't know if you could do this before with the previous version, but you definitely can with this version. Siri, launch Dropbox. Okay, so there you go. A couple more things before we end this video. Email looks a little bit different. It's the same functionality. 
But uh, one thing that you notice on email is that you can swipe left on a specific email. You can trash it or you can hit more to reply, forward flag, do whatever. And if you bring up the specific, the individual email, of course you can also reply, forward print, and all that right from there. So not much new in the email app. If you go to messages, these don't look radically different. You will notice that, uh, for instance, this is the conversation I had with my son. He sent me a video the other day. You notice that, you know, there's different colors here. The typography is a little different, but basically it's the same app as before. So those are some of the new features of iOS 7. Again, it's not radically different than what's been before, but it does have some different design elements, different typography, some new features. I think it's definitely worth upgrading. So I would definitely give this a thumbs up. Good job, Apple. And I look forward to the next version of this. By the way, my battery life seems to be better because they, they handle app downloading a little bit differently in this to conserve battery life. And uh, also my phone just seems a lot faster than it was before. You know, I have about the same number of apps on here as before, nothing radically different, but it just seems noticeably faster since I put iOS 7 on here. So I would definitely recommend it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks so much.